right, Steve Newham, historian, and Richard, my partner in crime. Hello. And we are here today to talk about uh, the city water side. Um, we've been today and had a good look around city water side, haven't we? Yeah, we haven't we? Um, and um, just sort of evaluating whether they've got it right or wrong. Um, so we've been to various different areas, haven't we? Um, and um, you've got to look at the camera, lad. Oh, okay. You've got to talk to the camera. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yeah, we've been looking at the different areas um, of what we've got and whether we've got it right or wrong. So the first thing we did is we basically um, came down, didn't we? Went past the steaming uh, lump of dog mess. Um, to be honest with you, the biggest pile of dog mess I've ever seen, which was that. So that's my first impression. Um, to the development um, and basically then we, we came across this development keep moat homes yes keep moat homes and foria the development was called um, basically this was the, one of the second developments to be built on the city water side and it was quite a modern take on um, on the uh, you know quite a modern modern collection of houses how did you find them yeah the really contemporary style um um, somewhere that I would buy if I was uh, looking for really been delivered there. Look, it's <laughs> live. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it is. It was a really nice development, and I think the different render finishes. Not one house was 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 the same, was it? And it all looked different. Um, great canal side location. I think the development is a winner. It works. Although we went to the other side of the development, and there's a, there's there's an area there on the on the front side where there's a big piece of um, waste ground where apparently Keep Moat are planning to uh, build some houses on there, unconfirmed, but I know that they are. And on that side, there's some um, local authority uh, affordable houses on there. Now, sometimes you, they, they do say that you're not supposed to be able to see what see um, affordable houses in with a development. Did you find that they just blended in nicely? Um, no, there was that uh, house on the end with the wee wee bin out and lots of rubbish strewn out and litter yeah, in the gardens. Um, yes, and damaged the doors. Damaged doors, all the paint flaking off it looked like it had been slammed a thousand times. There was a couple of houses along there that weren't really well looked after and they clearly were stood out as social housing. Yeah. Um, now, if you paid that amount of money for a house, to live next door to someone like that, do you think you'd be happy? I wouldn't at all. Yeah. Well, you know. So anyway, after we've we've left that we left that development, we uh, went on then and we went and had a look at Red Row Homes' development, um, which has now been finished. And this development was uh, is off Ivy House Lane, and this was called Water's Edge. Um, to be fair, we you know, there's another view of it. Uh, to be fair, what do you think of that? It doesn't really work. It's um, they, they look bland yeah. and boring, don't they? I mean, you know, the, the, the kind of white and the side kind of dirty grey colour on the cladding doesn't... To me, it looks very cold. Yeah, and it will dirty up over the years. Yeah. You know, I think you didn't look like the keep mode development. was very warm as you looked at it, wasn't mm. it? So I feel definitely that... Um, that, that I don't, I don't, didn't rate that development at all. No. Um, they had a lot of trouble selling these properties as well um, over there. And also, they had a little area called, um, you know, they had these, um, this housing area, didn't they, that they tried called Debut, which was a load of mixed apartments and townhouses all put up together with communal areas and no back gardens. It was pretty dire wasn't it yeah it's not aged well at all but we have to we have to add though that red row homes aren't the company that they were when they built that estate you know they build really nice houses now um and it, it what did it remind you of it reminds me of the old style sort of 1960s going into the 70s sort of social housing estates it, it doesn't have the community feel to it it's just people going to the house get into the car off they go and nobody says yeah. hello in the mornings and even if they even started to look like some of the communal areas were all battered with punch marks and the, the render was starting to look, you know, in actual fact I think that estate is going to be the slums of the future for Stoke. It, it certainly got that feel about it. Yeah, it definitely has. Well we moved away from there then and we went up to um, City Water, we went up, we, we walked up the canal didn't we? 
And there's a new development up the canal. Um, we just did uh, Lovell Homes. Yes, Lovell Homes, and that's a new development called Colden Key. Um, now this, to me, this is this this is what Colden Key looks like. Um, that'll give you an idea. The artist's impression. Now this development is going to be this development is going to really change a lot about Stoke on Trent, isn't it? It's you know the designs there. The, the strap by so you could say cold and key, it's the place to be, or it's going to be the place to be. Go on, give good, good. Yes. Love our homes. Love our homes, cold and key, it's the place that you're going to want to be. <laughs> so that's it. We think that development is really, really nice, and I think that's got the right balance. And I think, you know, in terms of, of design, whoever designed this and approved it, fair play to them. It's yeah. good development. Very yeah. contemporary design. Yeah, so. and um, I don't think they're going to be hanging around much, do you? I think they'll be I sold they'd, like hotcakes. I think they'll fly off the shelves. There was one little problem with the development. Did you see the tower blocks behind? How could you miss them? They do detract slightly from the sky. They like. overshadow the development, let's be fair. Yes. But the good thing about tower blocks is they do contain, they're very self-contained, aren't they? You know, so you don't, you know, get a lot of hanging around on the streets or anything like that from anybody who lives in them so you know that's a really good thing um, I'm expecting that to be an A1 development so thumbs up for that so so far we've got thumbs up to Keep Moat Homes and th th thumbs up to um, the the uh, Lavelle site as well it's also worth mentioning we did see the site where Seddon are proposing to build 60 houses um, and they were going to in the plans are to demolish a mill a really nice mill it would have it would be much nicer if they would restore it, uh, make it into luxury apartments, so you keep the heritage of the area and see the industry that used to be there and now we convert to and then we could now convert it into modern apartments. It was quite sad because there was quite a lot of old terrace houses there still, wasn't there? And they, you know you could see the wallpaper and the yeah you know, and, and the things. Moving on then, well we went on from there and we went and had a look at um, the Gladale site, again that was one of the flagships um, developments uh, on on City Water site. That was like a surprise wasn't it really, because it really did look tatty. Yes, the the parts where the social housing has been blended in, the um, you can see, well I don't think you could even call them gardens, it was just a patch of waste ground where yeah. maybe some shrubs had once stored or were all cut back, really detracted from the area. Um, I understand some of the people there do care about their yeah. gardens. Uh, I think it's just the small, maybe minority, just one or two residents who live there that spoil it for the rest of the people. Yeah, I agree. And that's a look. That's what the development looks like now. You can just see it just looks tatty. Nobody cares about the front gardens, and basically just looks like any other. Um, you know any other estate really and the road hasn't been finished no it isn't so you know nobody's really even taking care of any of the uh, any of the development really you know that I bet I mean they do the designs look all right but to, even to me I mean I agree if you look at those designs if they were all done in sort of different colors that mm. like you'd have a like if you look over there at that at the different colors on that wall you know, if you look at all the different colours, like the turquoise and what have you, if every house had its own identity like that, people would go, wow, have you seen those houses at City Waterside? Yeah. You know, oh, the God, there's pink ones, you know, and that's what gives a place identity. Yeah. All these just look, they look the same, don't they? A real individual character. The I mean, the shades is what uh, make it stand out. Yeah, giving it identity, mm. you know, and I think that's what, what's missing. So, to clarify now, with, with our trip to City Waterside, I do not think the social the social housing integration with the private uh, integration is working at all. You no. know, it's making it all look untidy. There's nobody there to ensure that the um, gardens and, and the house exterior, the social housing, is kept looking as yeah. nice as the private. We're not housing. saying everybody's like that, are we? No. Because we know that they're not. You know, I know some companies, you know, have very strict guidelines of their affordable housing and, and what standard it should be kept to. Um, just quickly mentioning the Ben Bay, Ben Bay, they have just built some um, a, a building spouse over the same part of, as Keep Moat. Um, and, uh, sorry, it's the same company as uh, Gladedale. And they built some, um, there was a block of houses there for Aspire, weren't they? Yeah. At Aspire. And they were really nice, really, really nice looking houses. The brickwork was perfect. A lovely, smoky, sort of black colour, you know, um, charcoal colour, weren't they? 
And if it didn't have the Aspire uh, sign outside, I would have put them down as private housing. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, but they're not. They're actually private, um, you know, affordable houses. Um, so, you know, a housing associations are actually even getting better quality, you know, affordable houses. Are getting, it, shows, it shows that affordable housing is getting better quality, but we have to watch the integration between the two. Yes. You know, um, if you if I could put a house for 250000 do I want to be living opposite a house that's an affordable house? Where you know you've got you've got kids kicking your front doorstep, your your, your front fence in, you know. No. I don't know, you know, and that might explain why the houses aren't being sold as well as they should be. Yeah. You know, how can we how can we attract the larger houses and the larger house buyers if they're mixing the developments up but the way they are? There does need to be strict controls. Yeah, them, uh... I think they need to the, the council need to have a good rethink about city water side because. Since the recession, I think you've took your eye off the ball, and I think now, you know, you need to make City Waterside a proud place, like the concept that you developed in the first place. I'll, I'll agree with that, Steve. That's uh, Steve and Richard signing out, New Homes Historian. Goodbye.